Hey, let's uh, move to something uh, related. And, you know, it was kind of a takeoff of, of what we discussed last week. We talked about open AI, about is it open uh, or closed and, you know, which, uh, which is better. And I think, you know, profit versus nonprofit. This is a little bit of a, a derivation of that, but a lot of the conversations at South by Southwest this week were exactly as you might expect, is AI innovation uh, better closed or, or open? And I participated in a, in a speaking event and I also attended a related uh, panel that was led off by uh, IBM, Meta, uh, CEO of Partnership on AI and the co-founder and executive chairman of AnyScale. Uh, and by the way, he's a you know, CTO of Databricks uh, as well. And I really appreciated how, you know, I'm not an intellectual, I'm just gonna throw it out there. You're probably not surprised, but I do like a good debate, right? Uh, Cause there's a lot of people that might say, closed is actually good, right? I mean, it's better security, right? It's better safety, less, less prompt manipulation. And gosh, shouldn't uh, the companies that spent a hundred million dollars to to train a, an LLM, should, shouldn't they be paid back for, for all their investments? So I, I like it on stage, they actually uh, red teamed it. And <laughs> one other thing I liked was the provocative and, and Dario just got a huge shit eating grin on his face, the biggest smile. Hey, can you really scale AI outside of the largest tech companies? And he just got a huge smile on his face uh, and, and just talked about how uh, you can disaggregate innovation. People are actually smart enough outside of the largest 10 uh, companies to be able uh, to do this. And a good analogy was Linux, right? Uh, related to the safety and security and, and, and can you scale, which is, you know, I don't know if you remember this, Dan, but probably in, um, in the 90s, right, uh, when, you know, Unix went to Linux, there was this debate on is Linux safe? And Microsoft was the biggest company that said it's not safe, only Windows is safe and very managed Unix uh, distributions. And here we are today, you know, the lingua franca of, of edge, edge capability and also data center uh, is Linux. And there's so many people banging on Linux that, that again, nothing is impenetrable, but it is um, very much a, a secure operating system. And look at the companies who can innovate uh, off of it is, is, is pretty, pretty big. And, you know, what I liked about the panel is that the, this wasn't a big commercial for the AI Alliance that's spearheaded by IBM and Meta with 200 members. Uh, it was more of an intellectual uh, conversation. I had the time, had the chance to uh, uh, interview uh, Dario and Jan Stoika from AnyScale and uh, and Databricks, and really had a good conversation diving in. And you know, I asked them some really tough questions about, "Hey, this is great. I saw the press release, but you know, what have you guys done lately?" So as soon as we've uh, we published this uh, video in a few days, I urge you to go in and check it out. Oh yeah, this is a big topic, Pat. You know, and I know we you did it like through the lens of quote unquote open and closed versus open and closed, but this is a sort of a permutation of the Sam Altman and Elon Musk debate that's going on. And the you know, the debate really is, you know, one is who owns this? Two is like the commercialization of it. Three is the safety of it. Four is, you know, should any one company be given a stark advantage through ownership and licensing of a platform? And then, you know, five, and they talked about this a lot on our, one of the pods you and I like, the all in pod is about like, you know, what is the legality of, you know, building an architecture like this? So, you know, I like what you covered. I wasn't at this session, so I can't speak to the content at the session itself, Pat. But what I can say is that, you know, uh, I personally think what's going on right now is we need more open than closed. And not to say that there isn't a, a business in closed, but the problem is right now is we're running into all these issues with LLMs and lack of transparency is, is gating us from understanding where we're going wrong. 
And, you know, this is a snowball. How quickly does it snowball out of effect? Whether it's, you know, like we talked about historical accuracy, we talk about what information is fed. We're living in a world now where I forget which school it is. Um, it was one of the Ivies or Duke or one of the schools that basically said they're getting rid of essays now, college entrance essays, because kids are writing them with generative AI and no longer can the admissions counselors actually tell, you know, what's real, what's not, what's how to discern. And by the way, this is, I realize I'm a tangential of everything you talked about, but it's, this is really important. The, the world is, is effectively changing. And we already have entered a world with social media where people are, are, are basically ingesting data that is not always fact-based, but we are interpreting it as fact. Now you have a system that is already interpreting data based on a set of algorithms is spitting out an output that is rooted in bias because the algorithms all have bias. It's not a, we won't say which way or what it is because we don't know because if it lacks transparency. So an open ecosystem at least forces a higher level of transparency. And this goes back to why Musk is having a fight, you know, after spending a hundred million into open AI right. with, with, with Sam is that, you know, he, at least with Grok, you know, he's publishing everything. He's open sourcing and plans to publish um, everything that's in the algorithm. You've seen it with Twitter, by the way. He's done it with X. He's published the algorithm. Everybody, you know, you have to have some technical chops to know what you're looking at. But if you actually have technical chops, you can understand how it works. The bottom line is opaqueness is going to be problematic, especially when it comes to building these models and when it comes to the outputs of these models. And you have to assume that if we're going to get the productivity gains out of all of this technology, it means we are going to be limited in how much we will scrutinize the outputs of these of these uh, AI systems. Meaning, you know, you don't get 10x or 100x productivity on emails outbound through your sales without basically assuming that the outputs are correct. Yeah. We now have people building content, sending it out to our customers based upon an algorithm and very little fact checking and accuracy checking because that's the only way you get the productivity. Otherwise, you're just QAing all day long, which again won't get you there. So. I didn't see your session, but this is a huge topic. I love it. I'd love to talk more about it. I realize I derailed a little bit of your specific panel, but Pat. Well, Dan, this wasn't about shilling the panel. This was oh, no, about, I didn't say you shilled it. it. I just meant like I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't speak to it. Yeah. It wasn't no. there. I, yeah. You didn't see it. I'm not asking to do that, but it was more on the topic, which you did. So thank you. 